<laughs> what is up down and sideways, you beautiful individuals? Welcome back to another epi of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beauties. We got a little pivot from the world's preview action today because a little bit, not a little bit, a bombshell of LCS news. And we knew this was coming. There was lead up, rumors, even messages from the CEO himself of this happening. TSM is gone from the LCS for 2024, fully confirmed the Shopify Rebellion purchasing that LCS spot that TSM has been holding since 2011, 12 years. We've been seeing this squad in the LCS, which means, of course, this is truly the end of an era as this is one of the two pioneer teams of the LCS. And by the way, the other one's already gone too in CLG. I think it's extremely important to weather the current you know uh, situation around TSM and everything that has happened in the last you know uh, 2 years or so I think to really sour a lot of the community's opinion about the brand about the ownership uh, there I think the one thing to keep in mind as you mentioned is that longevity is all those other years you have to look back at the history of TSM, what they contributed to the esports space, what they contributed to North American esports. I think there's a lot that is is contained in that legacy, as well as the side of talking about the future with Shopify Rebellion stepping into that stuff. And okay, Rebellion side of things, this is a team that's established in uh, a lot of other esports titles. They've only been around for a couple of years, have already made a sizable impact. They have a Valorant team, so I imagine that was two thumbs up moving up the ladder in terms of Riot's point of view for them joining the LCS. Uh, rumored hearing that they paid 10 million for the spot, which if you recall, that is what teams had to pay back in 2018. I think it was five up front and five over a few years or whatever the game, uh, the model was. But basically paying what you paid to get in five years ago, that's not accounting for all the what we're hearing are financial losses that LCS teams have been having over the years, but could have been worse for TSM? It absolutely could have been worse given the trends that we have seen in esports and then extended even more so, you know, really centered in on the LCS and the instability that we have seen not only with franchising, but as well the academy system, all, all these things, all the rules and that things are set in place. That type of instability, it's hard to try and invest and jump into a place like this and especially to get all that money back in that sense for TSM is a big gain for them in this type of current landscape that we're dealing with. Yes, you can look at it on, on the side of going, well, you know, this is a sign of not of not having growth in the LCS that it is still at this type of number. It didn't go up in any type of evaluation. But then I think a lot of people will have to take that sad reality pill and understand that this just simply wasn't possible to shoot for the stars and get even more at this point. And of course, it is going to be sad to see that TSM logo leave because you're talking about peak LCS fandom and interest. It's really those peak TSM years of 2016, 2017. You would hear the TSM chants worldwide, even when they weren't at tournaments. And unfortunately, over the last couple of years, those TSM chants kind of became memes because they were never at these international events. Yeah, I think uh, this is, of course, you know, a tale of two stories, really. When you're looking at TSM, I think you can kind of block out the eras from everything from the beginning until about 2017 or so. And then what has happened since then on, on this trajectory for TSM, that is still not to say even if you look in both those halves, there's not actual success out there on the rift at the LCS level domestically. Uh, it is, as you mentioned, though, that shortcoming time and time again internationally and then recently a lack of even being at these international events that has led the TSM, the infamous TSM chant, to becoming a bit of a meme. Now, maybe as we saw with energy coming in, immediately winning a title in their first split. Maybe this, these new teams, new brands, new ownership comes in and will give some lifeblood, reinvigorate the LCS as a whole. That's what I'm hoping for with the rebellion coming in here. The question now is, what does the future, what does 2024 look like for both the rebellion and TSM as a brand? Because this new Shopify squad coming in says they're going to maintain, bring the players over into next year. 
We'll see if that ends up being true with NRG, obviously bot lane changed, but as long as they are keeping insanity on this roster, we'll be happy. That's my one non-negotiable here at here for Mr. Shopify Rebellion. You want to get started with the right foot, with the community, with the approach in North America? Absolutely. Keeping insanity, rewarding him with that starting job, starting opportunity, heading into this fresh start for the squad absolutely has to be one of the top choices uh, for Shopify Rebellion. Uh, I'm relatively excited about this change coming through. I think a lot of people we've been waiting, uh, you know, kind of what's going to progress with TSM since we heard about their intentions and wanting to start this fresh page, fresh, uh, you know, start for the LCS, even saying goodbye to that long legacy, all that history, all those good memories that are still there and are legitimate. You still look at that future and what you can do, this refresh and how necessary I think it was for the organization, for the brand and its impact in the LCS. This is only going to be a good thing in my eyes. If, again, this is all in good faith still with Shopify Rebellion, which is, as I've looked through and I'm learning more about them and their involvement in esports, I'm feeling better about them uh, the more I see. It's it's poetic to have Hauntzer and Wild Turtle on this TSM roster. Guys who were there during the peak, some of the biggest personalities and faces in the history of the team. I think Wild Turtle now has played more games on TSM than Bjergsen, which is absolutely insane. But um, it's poetic to see them playing in the final split, leaving, maybe getting screwed over by TSM one more time as they get find themselves <laughs> not on a roster spot. Amen. They're going to have a hell of a dinner story to tell when they meet up with Sword Art to chat about <laughs> that one with the TSM history. It, it was fun. I think I think a lot of people have you know mixed opinions about bringing in veteran players like that from into the academy scene and, and their spot there and taking these jobs. All those type of things. I think when you do look at someone like Hanser, like Wild Turtle, you can see that investment of the time. You can see that development as well. Hanser is somebody that I think quite, you know, legitimately earned that ticket back up to the LCS while Turtle still contributed quite a bit and had his pop-off moments. So yeah, I think as a, as a farewell song to TSM, it was very fitting to have two of those very memorable players on the team. So we get the new brand coming into the LCS, but TSM allegedly not going to be dying as a brand in the League of Legends scene. We know months ago, ahead of the summer split, Reggie did his, you know, weird hostage type video about TSM that they are looking to join another tier one region. It's been in the works for years. Everyone, us kind of assuming it's going to be the LPL. And if we go off that assumption, 10 mil to sell this spot, it's a lot harder to find financial details on LPL squads, but with how popular the game is in China compared to North America, I imagine a spot is going to be even more pricey there. And if you're expecting to compete in an insanely stacked LPL, it's not like they're all of a sudden going to be signing all these marquee free agents for you to get two Korean imports and immediately be a top five team. Even if they get an LPL spot, you're looking at bottom two for a while. And I think the TSM brand at this point might be stronger overseas in a situation like the LPL LCK where you're not in tune with all the the drama and and the things that we have heard in the LCS you might be able to get that type of fresh start fresh appearance and then as you mentioned well who's signing in I think the problem then you run into is well yes you get a little bit of this fresh appearance fresh start in the LPL but then people go who who are you guys? We haven't seen you on the international stage. I thought you in disbanded so long. three years ago. <laughs> All these young players that are rising up to this star level right now, they weren't around to see Bjergsen and Double if popping off. They didn't care about that time and seeing these type of things. It's going to be a different world for TSM to establish themselves if they're starting out over there. I think it's important to talk about why we're suspecting it to be the LPL. LCK, very restrictive, very hard to get into that type of exclusive club. Obviously going to be also extremely, maybe triple to quadruple expensive to get into the LCK than it is for the LCS. And then, of course, you look at the LEC and it's, how could you ever go to the LEC away from the LCS? That would be the ultimate betrayal. I don't think that one's going down for a TSM EU. And, I mean, the LPL, obviously seven extra teams, much more options i don't think any of the lck squads won out of their franchising model that they just recently implemented so and i've seen people say you gotta go 
go budget. Get five young rookies, young players that are uh, haven't seen the big stage and hope that they grow up to that. Well, yeah, that's great. It's just easy to find five star young players and put them together, number one. Number two, what's TSM's history of scouting young players? It's not very good. No, it really is not. And especially in the most recent of times, I think the only person you can really point to is probably Spica. And, and he's now, of course, with FlyQuest, so he's not even stayed with the organization as far as that development. And then you think about bringing in five young players, you know, five kind of, you know, LDL type prospects stepping in to build up that young roster and challenge in the LPL. Number one, you got to hit the miracle lottery and finding that superstar in the making to be that charging player on your team. And then number two, you got to have the rest of the squad stick up into that area. It's going to take time. You're not going to step in in this first split and immediately find that miracle roster and get your payday in the LPL and instantly start getting that return. It's going to be a while. And if you're at the very bottom of the LPL, that's a very different picture than even being a middle tier team in the LPL. You're walking a fine line if you go to the LPL and you're sitting solid 17th for a while. The memes are only going to intensify. Those TSM chants only be more oh, no. painful to hear from the crowds. But sad to see that brand leave. Excited to see Shopify Rebellion, new team come in. Get some memes associated with Shopify. And then, of course, see what the future of the TSM brand is overseas. This is only the beginning for both of these squads. But that is it today. Board League Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you. Beautiful people, as always. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.